Hey guys, it's Kat and I'm back today to play with some makeup. So I'm doing a first impression on this collection from L'Oreal. So it's a L'Oreal and Karl Lagerfeld collection. This came out in Australia probably a couple of weeks ago. I was sent this randomly. I just got it at my house and I thought, okay, cool. I'll give it a crack. So I did actually uh, take a photo on Instagram and um, I was actually pretty surprised at some of the shades of lipstick. Some of them are really beautiful and also the highlighter looks really cool. So that's that. So I want to put these all on my face. I want to swatch everything later on and I want to apply all the lipsticks, remove them, apply, remove, swatch, do all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to try on six lipsticks um, and try to get as much of this on my face as possible and let you know what I think about the collection. So I'm gonna start with the eyeshadow palette from the collection and all the packaging is this sort of like shiny black and matte black stripes um, and it's got L'Oreal X Carl. So this was actually announced that they were doing this before Carl Lagerfeld passed away. So um, it might seem a bit strange now, but it takes a while for makeup to come out. Um, but this is the eyeshadow palette. It's got a nice size mirror. Like it's actually a usable mirror. I could probably do like, if I'm looking in the mirror now, I can see everything sort of um, top lip upwards. So you can definitely, you know, use it for traveling. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of L'Oreal eyeshadows, so we'll see how it goes. But this is a nice mix of mattes and shimmers, cool and warm, nude and color. So it's pretty sort of beginner friendly. But at the same time, if you really don't like any color, you're going to hate these. Uh, if you don't like any nudes or you love a lot of color, it's not going to be enough for you. So it's sort of like... It's a strange one. It's sort of trying to appease everyone, um, but I'm going to try maybe a nude look using this um, with a tiny bit of color because I do want to mainly go uh, bright on the lips because there are some nude lip colors, but there's a lot of brights and I sort of want to wear one particular bright. So that's how I want to end this, but I will insert some swatches of this actually. Um, so if you do want to see how they swatch on bare skin, we can see it. All right, so I'll zoom in a little bit for the eyes and I'm just gonna go in with my Bare Minerals Primer just because uh, that's in my project pan. I'm trying to use it up, so let's do it. And to blend that out, I just use pretty much any brush that I don't really love for eyeshadow. So this is an Eco Tools uh, Micro Blending Brush. It's this weird angled one, but it does work really well at blending out your primer. All right, there's not many like transition-y sort of crease colors in here. So I'm just going to go in with that sort of um, nudey, sandy kind of matte color. Okay, it picks up pretty well on the brush and there's no uh, kick up in the pan. So that's a good sign. Um, and that actually applies pretty nicely for just a nude matte. It's not a really dark color, so it sort of matches my skin tone pretty well. It's just a little bit darker, which creates a nice little shadow. All right, of course I want to go in with a shimmery brown that says Carl on it, so let's mess this up. And that signature goes away very, very quickly, so it's just like an overspray. All right, so this is a shimmery brown, but it's a very subtle shimmery brown. It gives me a real sort of satiny vibe. Um, there's a bit of sheen to it, but nothing major. I do love this color though. These are the sort of everyday browns that I really think um, work for my eyes, eye coloring and skin coloring. Um, so this is a really beautiful color. I'm digging this color. Very powdery. Uh, I didn't tap off the brush then, which was a mistake because now I've got powder everywhere. So not tapping off the brush, tapping off the brush. Tap off the brush, guys. This particular shade is uh, quite powdery. All right, let's uh, wipe that away if we can. All right, because I do want to try a few shades in this palette, I want to go with this taupey color on the lower lash line with a bit of the silver, I think. Uh, there is like a champagne sort of pink color if you prefer a shim like a, a more traditional shimmery highlight. So there's this, but I kind of want to delve into these a little bit, a bit of smokiness. All right, so on a pencil brush, I'm just running that shimmer. Oh, that's a lot darker than I expected. So this one down here, apply. it's got a really dark base to it. Um, so we've got to be a bit careful with it. It needs a much lighter hand than I was expecting because it's very, very blackened. All right, I thought I'd just zoom in a little bit so you can see it a bit better. So this lower shade is quite pigmented. I'm very surprised, but it's also a lot more cool toned and a lot more dark than how it looks in the pan. So um, I applied this shade here, which translated to that, which is a bit of a surprise. All right, I wanna put some brightness back into this look. So I've just wiped off my pencil brush and I'm going in with that silver shade there. This feels a lot firmer in the pan, so it doesn't have as much kick up as um, that brown did, but let's just pop that in here. That's a nice sort of twinkly silver. 
Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it properly, but it's not super, super like metallic. It's almost like um, a bit glittery, I think. It looks really metallic in the pan though. So uh, I guess if you put this on over a glitter glue or you put it really boldly, you could get that really silver look. But I sort of just want that sort of silver twinkly look, which I, I quite like. All right, on a smaller pencil brush, I just have some of that matte black and I'm just running that on my lower lash line right near the lashes, the outer corner, just to add a little bit of dimension. I don't want it to completely take over the look. I just want to add a little bit of depth there. It's actually nicely pigmented matte black. Um, that applies really nicely. These sort of dark colors, like the gray and the blacks, uh, I do quite like the formula of them. Um, I love the color of the brown, but it was a little bit uh, powdery and wasn't as pigmented as I like, but I do like the tone of it. But I think these shades down the bottom perform a lot better. Before I move on to the liners, I do want to get a little bit of that um, matte red color just on the top lash line in the crease. So it's cool toned on the bottom and we're adding a little bit more warmth to the top of the lid. Um, this one actually, once again, not super bad pigmentation. Um, nice and blendable, not too bold a color, like it's still pretty wearable. Adds a bit of warmth to the look and it's not super powdery. And I'm just building it up a little bit in the, right in the crease. Now the bottom lash line is looking a lot more dark, but I might go in and put some black after I do my liner. So let's do the liner now. So there are two liners in this collection and they're liquid liners. We have a black and a rose gold. Now what I like about these types of liner is it's got the ink well and then you take out um, the sort of felt tip. I prefer a brush applicator, but I really like these um, wells because you always find that your brush is very, very wet and generally contains more product than just a pen liner. But this is the black. There we go. It's quite nice and black. We'll see how it sort of um, dries down, if it's shiny or if it's matte. Oh, and this one looks more pewter than it does rose gold. That's more of a silvery, yeah, taupe shade, which is really pretty. That'd be nice on the lower lash line. So I might use that just as like a little pop on the lower lash line. I sort of thought it would be rose gold based on that color there, but it's not. And hopefully you can see the black is drying down to be a matte, but that taupe color is definitely staying metallic. All right, time for some liner. Very black, very smooth to apply, very wet, which is nice. Um, I'm just picking up a little bit more because I do sort of wipe off the excesses, not too, too much on the, the brush or the felt tip applicator and I'm just oh I've got a bit of bad blending there but it is what it is all right one thing I have noticed is this felt tip it's got a nice small point and it is fairly flexible at the point um, but it doesn't hold heaps and heaps of product um, and often felt tips tend to lose their shape after time but this is a really nice um, performing liner right at this stage. It might not wear super well, but it um, applies really nicely. So again, really, really black, really, really pigmented, easy to apply. Um, one thing I really like about it, it doesn't bleed in my eye. I find that a lot of liquid liners, I don't really like liquid liners because as soon as I put them in, the, in a corner, um, the liquid from my eyes tend to make it bleed. And so it sort of like um, looks a bit funny on the inner corner. This is drying down really, really nicely. The test is how it wears, but so far I'm really happy with how it applies. The one thing I've noticed with the application of this that's a bit annoying is that um, since the actual wand uh, is quite short, when you go to get some more product, it doesn't actually hit the ink. So um, you have to sort of, if you want to dip back into it while you're using it, you sort of have to shake it a bit. Um, and then use it again. So it's just that that part is very, very short and it doesn't reach the product, um, but that's not a huge deal. It's just something I noticed. Now for this taupey color, I'm just gonna run it on my lower lash line a little bit. Um, I'm really interested in how this wears because if it wears really well, I'm really keen to use it a lot more because I do like metallic liquid liners. I think they're really, really pretty. Um, and this matches the silvers and the shades um, on my lower lash, lash line really, really well. So it matches the palette really nicely. 
I don't think it adds too, too much to the look. So it sort of um, just blends in with the eyeshadows. So what I might do, um, I might put a bit of black in the outer corner and then line the wing a little bit. So I'll do that in a second. I'll just finish this just to even it out. Hopefully you can see that that liner does catch the light a little bit differently to the eyeshadow, but once again, it really um, mixes with eyeshadow. So I'm just going in with a really little fluffy brush. This is from Morphe, it's M506. And I'm just getting a little bit more of that black matte just to sort of even the um, top lash line with the bottom because I've got quite a lot of black. I don't have any sort of that same darkness on the top. So I'm just kind of adding a little bit of black. The black definitely doesn't apply as intensely on a bit of a fluffy brush. All right, so we're a little bit more smoky and now I'm just going in with that liner again and I'm just lining the tail of my wing just to add a little bit more of that sort of silvery color, which is quite a pretty color. So just for a little bit of detail. And because I really don't like leaving my waterline nude when I have such a sort of brownie, smoky, cool toned eye, I'm going in with the Stila Smudge Stick uh, Waterproof Eyeliner in Vivid Smoky Quartz, which is just a brown and it's just going to add a bit of uh, depth there just to sort of make that work a bit better. And just a quick test here. So they are quite budge proof, which is really nice to see. I'm pressing pretty damn firm and they're not moving. Let's use a makeup wipe. Uh, that is taking a bit of rubbing too. So it does come off and it would come off with like a cleanser or an oil cleanser, but um, it is pretty budge proof, which is nice to see. So I'm hoping this stays on uh, for quite some time. There's also a mascara that we're gonna try. So let's open it up. What does a wand look like? There, standard mascara. Doesn't feel too wet. It doesn't feel too clumpy. Just on first impressions, I am a little bit concerned about how dry this is because this is a sort of level of dryness I expect when you've been using a mascara for like a month. So it does give a nice effect, but um, it's probably a little bit too dry too early, um, but it's just a standard mascara. It doesn't do too much craziness, adds a bit of length, adds a bit of volume, doesn't clump too much, which is nice. All right, on first impressions, not loving the mascara, probably too dry for what I like. And also the more I try to build it up, the more sort of spiky it starts looking, which I don't like either. So uh, this is probably the least impressive thing I've tried so far, but uh, there we go. Uh, the thing I'm really excited to try is this highlighter. I think this highlighter looks really, really pretty. Once again, it's got a nice mirror. It's got two shades, um, a lighter sort of champagne color, more gold in the middle. Uh, it does have the Carl signature on it, which will just wipe away as, as it does. Um, but I might swatch these two and then use like all of it combined. So those are the two shades there. You do have quite a rich gold and more of a very light champagne-y color. Um, so you can get some uh, versatility with this. And the good thing is that the pans are big enough that you can sort of access the colors by themselves. It's not the easiest job, but if you wanted to, you can go in there and just get the bottom half or the bottom part and use that color, or you can get in there and um, use that color. So you can actually access them individually, but I'm going to just put my brush everywhere, try to get a bit of everything, tap off a lot of that excess because I picked up way too much. And let's see how it goes. Okay, that actually is a pretty color, all right. It is a little bit texture emphasizing. You can see some little like marks and bumps that I have on there. But overall, that color is very, very pretty. On me, it's like a warm nude. So it's slightly um, sort of warm toned, bit gold toned, but it does look quite nude on me. So I actually really like that effect. Let's put a little bit more on. There we go. It's very pretty and it's not too like bold. You don't get that stripe that looks really metallic. Um, it sort of is really pretty. It's, it is quite intense, but if you put on less, you could um, definitely have a more subtle look, but I think that's a pretty highlighter. I think that's a really nice one. All right, lipstick time. And there are six lipsticks. These are the only things that have Carl's face on it. I don't know if you can see on the top, it's got that Carl Lagerfeld little like logo on it, um, but the packaging still has that sort of stripe design and the signature. And we have a whole bunch of shades. 
All right, so these are the shades here. We've got sort of nude colors. We've got a red, we've got a berry, two sort of pinks. Um, there is one pink in this that I think looked really beautiful. I think it might be this shade here. Yeah, it's this one. That color is gorgeous. So the packaging makes it look like it's really like Barbie pink, but it's actually really, really beautiful. Haven't swatched this. Oh, it just smells like L'Oreal lipstick. Very, very perfumed. A little bit like, um, I don't know, it's floral. It's a bit funny. Oh, I'm not a big fan of it, but it sort of just reminds me of old school makeup, like when I was a kid, smelling mum's lipstick. So I, I don't hate it, but it's not, it's not the best. It's like lilac or something old and fuddy-duddy. So this is the one that I want to leave wearing. So I'm going to try this one last, this pink, but I'll start working through the nudes um, and then sort of build up to the darker colors so we can start seeing how these apply. I just thought I'd mention as well that the names are all sort of standard names, but they all have a K in them. And we're starting with the shade Cultured. So this is a sort of traditional nude. It sort of looks like my exact lip color. It's not quite peachy nude. It's quite, not quite brownie nude. It's not quite pinky nude. It's very, very sort of neutral nude. So give it a crack. Oh, it's a lot more sort of shiny than I was expecting. It's quite shiny. It's not matte at all. And it's very thin feeling. So that's a very, very pretty shade. Like I said, it's sort of like my lips, but better. Um, it's quite thin. It's not going to wear for a super long period of time because it does have that shine and it is quite thin in formula. It does have that really strong lilac accent, which the more I think about it, the more I don't like it. But I do think that's a really pretty color. The next one I'm going to try is contemporary. From the bottom, it sort of looks orangey but it is more of a brownie deeper nude, which I really like the idea of these. So let's have a look. Really pretty color. This almost has a bit of a brick tone to it. So um, maybe it does match the bottom more than I expected. Um, this is not really a nude that I would normally go for. I like more brownie tones than these sort of slightly ready tones with the nude. But once again, very comfortable on the lips. Pretty color, very, very wearable. One thing I did notice is because these have more of a sort of thin, shiny formula, it's hard to get a really precise line. So we might struggle with some of the darker shades. All right, let's now try the red. This is provocative, but you know, there's a, they're emphasizing K in provocative. Um, and this is just a beautiful sort of traditional red. Looks a bit glossy. The point is really nice. Um, the bullets look really, really fancy. Ooh. Nicely pigmented. It almost has a bit of an orange tone to it. That's a gorgeous glossy red. So yeah, it's not quite a neutral red or a true red. It does have a slight, slight, slight uh, warmth to it and I don't know if you can see but the lip line was a little bit harder to get quite even because it is uh, It's one of those formulas that sort of move around a little bit um, I think this is nicely pigmented and if you like a glossy red lip, this is very very pretty um, My concern would be that it doesn't last as long as I would want a red lip to because as soon as a red lip starts to fade It looks very very noticeable But this is really pretty and if you wanted it to last a lot longer, you know put it over a lip liner um, but that's a pleasant surprise. It's very pretty. All right, we've got more of a berry toned pink. So I am leaving that bright pink to last. Um, but let's, oh. Okay, that's very, it's really pretty. It's like a magenta berry pink. Once again, this one was a little bit harder to get that uh, sort of even lip line. It looks a little bit skippy. Um, just because of the formula, but it is a pretty color. It's not one that I personally like to wear just on a daily basis. I just feel like it's a little bit, I don't know, it doesn't really suit me, but there we go. We've got it. Oh, and I didn't even say the color of that one. That's iconic and ends with a K. Uh, I reckon probably the red should have been called iconic because I don't think that color was very iconic. It was just a color. All right, this next shade is very dark. It's called Contrasted with a K. Uh, let's see how it actually applies. Ooh. This is very much like MAC Rebel. I think it's Rebel. 
it's like a sheer, like it's not opaque, but it's super pigmented. So it's this really sort of, looks almost like a, sta a berry stain. All right, that's a really beautiful color. You can see it does look like a berry, but it, it's like got that sheer sort of look to it. So it's quite pigmented, but you can see the lips through it. These are the types of colors as well that if you just take a little bit and tap it on, you can sort of create different colors. So this can end up looking like a berry stain if you really blotted it down, but it's a really beautiful color. Nice, it's like red, purple, berry-ish. It's really pretty. I also get the vibe from that one that the longer you leave it on, the more it will stay in your lips, like a pink color. So um, it will put, sort of throughout the day probably stain down to a bit of a pink, which can be really, really pretty. But the last one I'm very excited about, this is Charismatic, starting with a K. And this color looks gorgeous. It looks like a corally vibrant pink, uh, which is totally the pink that if I want to wear one, I want to wear this one. So hopefully it's good. All right, that is a lot different on camera than it is in real life. Hang on, I'll finish applying it, then I'll talk about it. All right, not exactly what I was expecting. On camera, I think it looks a lot more like it looks in the bullet. So it has a warm tone to it. It almost looks like a sort of quite dark, but vibrant, pinky, corally sort of tone. Whereas in person, it looks more like the sticker. So if I compare this to the sticker, it just looks like the same tone, but a little bit darker. So the same sort of bluey pink, but darker. So it looks quite different on camera. I actually prefer how it looks on camera, the warm tone to it. Um, in person, it sort of looks a bit like a Barbie pink and it's not really my fave, but I do think it's pretty. I think it's very similar to the other pink. Okay, so I'm just gonna swatch the one that I'm wearing. See, can you see? It's more blue toned, but for some reason on camera on my face, it looks more um, sort of coral, really weird. That's how it looks in person. So it's a lot more, once again, sort of blue toned pink rather than warm coral toned pink. Um, and if I compare it to the other one, Iconic, uh, I feel like these are too similar. They don't need them both. This is a little bit more purpley, a little bit more mauve tones, a little bit tiny bit more berry, but you don't need them both in a collection of six. All right, so what do I think about this collection now that I've just thrown it on my face? Um, and it's, you know, I can't give you a comprehensive review. This is just a first impressions, but if I do have any products that stand out as being absolute favorites or really horrible, I will talk about them in my favorites and fails of November. So I'll sort of recap you there. Um, probably the things I liked the most was definitely the eyeliners and the highlighter. So the eyeliners, if they last well, which I'm hoping they do because they lasted pretty well on the back of my hand, especially wiping it off with a makeup wipe, these I think are going to be great. The only issue was having to like, when you have to re um, dip your brush, you have to sort of close it and shake it to get the product on the brush. But I think the colors are really nice. They applied really nicely. I love the matte super black of the black one. I really like the metallic taupey silver of the other one. I think um, silver can be quite harsh, but adding a bit of taupe to it, it makes it a lot more sort of wearable for people that don't like really, really harsh metallic. So I think these are really, really beautiful. Then the next thing that I like the most out of this collection so far is the highlighter. I think, um, okay, so I've got a bit of kick up because I tapped off a lot on my brush. Um, I think the colors individually are really pretty. There's a nice gold and there's like a champagne gold, but I think together they create a really, really beautiful highlighter. It's not a subtle highlighter. Um, if you applied a small amount and buffed it in, you'd look more like a wet look highlighter, but I think it's really, really flattering. It doesn't look too heavy on the skin. A lot of highlighters these days look so metallic and heavy on the skin. This sort of just blends with the skin. So when I'm facing on, you can't see it, but when I like a move, it catches the light really, really nicely. And it's a really nice color for my skin tone. So I really do like the highlighter. The next thing that I probably like the most is the eyeshadow palette. Um, I generally have very low expectations for L'Oreal eyeshadow palettes. So I think that these um, applied quite nicely. They're not perfect. Um, this brown's a beautiful tone. It's like my favorite tone, um, but it was a little bit satin. It was a little bit powdery but it did uh, like end up creating a nice look. The black, especially on a firmer brush, applied quite pigmented on a um, sort of fluffier brush, not as pigmented. Silver was a nice sort of topper shimmer color. This was a lot darker than it sort of looks. 
Um, so if you look at it in the pan, it looks quite light, but then if you swatch it, it ends up looking quite blackened as a base. So it's a bit smoky, but it's a really beautiful color. Um, and the red applied quite nicely as well. So I think even though this is not a palette that I sort of like, I really, really need in my collection, I think it worked pretty well. And I do like the overall effect. There was no issues with it so much. There was a little bit of fallout and a little bit of powderiness, but if you tap off at your brush, it's not that big a deal. Um, I didn't delve into like the blue and the pink and the champagne kind of colors, but if you wanted a bit more um, sort of color, they do have those. Once again, a little bit powdery, but they're not too bad. So yeah, not my favorite color story, but it, it created a look I enjoyed. So I I can't complain too much about it. So I'd definitely say the eyeshadow palette was sort of in the medium range. It wasn't fantastic, but it wasn't bad. And I would say the same things about the lipsticks. I do like the look of them. I think that sort of shine is really, really pretty. Um, it feels comfortable on the lips. It's not drying because it is like a shiny formula. It's nice and thin. Um, the pigmentation is really, really nice. I just found that personally, um, the smell is really too much. They really need to change that. It's really, it, it's sort of dated and it smells almost like, almost smells like antique makeup or vintage makeup or something. It just smells a bit funky. It's like a violet smell, doesn't need to be there. And I can just still smell it on my lips. So even though I might really like some of these colors and I might like the finish, I personally find it quite hard to want to wear these because the smell is pretty extreme. Also, I've got a cold right now. So if I can still smell it on my lips, um, it's too strong. So that alone is a deterrent for me. Um, but I also think that the shininess, um, I really love the pigmentation on some of these. Like this is a gorgeous amount of color in my opinion, but I know that because they have that glossier finish, they're going to fade down really fast. And I don't like having to babysit lipsticks. So often when you have quite pigmented, glossy lipsticks, they can smear, they can move, they can transfer, and you end up having to check your makeup too often for my personal liking. So I also think that the lip that I'm currently wearing, the color in the bullet looks a lot nicer than the color swatched. So I really would have liked to have seen that more true to the bullet. Um, as it is, these two sort of pink shades are too similar in my opinion. And um, these are probably the least popular shades of lipstick, like pinks and bright pinks and purples. Not many people buy them. So I don't know why there's two out of six. I understand having a couple of nudes. Yep, they probably should have had another nude. Um, and I understand having a berry and a red, but having two bright pinks, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think that's the wisest. And I think they should have either gone for a more cool tone red or adding like a different tone of nude, like maybe a cooler tone nude or something like that. So yeah, I think they could have improved a little bit on the shades. They could definitely improve on the scent. Um, but how these wear, you know, it will, time will tell. And the thing that I probably liked the least was the mascara and there's nothing particularly wrong with this mascara. It just feels a little bit dry. Um, for a brand new mascara. So I don't like, I don't think the effect is amazing. It's okay. It's wearable. Um, but I just feel like this is going to dry out pretty quickly because it feels quite dry just as I opened it. So if my least favorite thing was the mascara, which just because it's a bit dry, this collection actually does seem to perform pretty well. It's just about whether or not you will get used out of it. If you're looking for a nice, comfortable, pigmented, glossy lip and you don't mind the overwhelming scent of lilac, like the lipsticks might be great. If you really like the colors in the eyeshadow palette, like the formula isn't outstanding, but it's definitely usable. But for me personally, I can see myself wearing these the most. I think they're very, very wearable very usable and just on first impressions, I really like the quality of them as well. So um, yeah, nice little collection, bit of fun if you're interested, um, but that's my first impressions. Let me know if you've tried these or swatched these or what you're most interested in. Um, I reckon they gotta change the scent of those lipsticks. Please make it nicer and um, I would actually want to wear them a lot more because some of the colors are really pretty. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that first impressions and I'll see you guys in the next one, bye.